It's early fall, late September, and we're in South Dakota calling coyotes. And we've been here a time or two before. You gotta play with the hot temperatures, sometimes the wind, but we're optimistic that we're gonna call in some coyotes. But we actually have access to all of this ground. The White River is on the far end there. You can't really even right. see it yet. We can so get around that stuff. Too. Oh yeah, there's a road. I'm hunting with Mitch Petrie from the Outdoor Channel and Mitch and I go way back. At the time I was an independent producer who was doing some work with Fox Pro and we conceived the concept of the Fur Takers TV show and like the idea of bringing good videography and storytelling to predator hunting. And that's where I met Abner Druckenmiller. Uh, Mitch has taught me just about everything I know about outdoor television and TV. As fur takers took off, I spent more and more time doing my own predator hunting and, and of course I watched the show and, and so the fur takers have really been my primary source of education on predator hunting. I'm hoping for an education on this trip from you because I've learned a lot from fur takers yeah. and um, I want to see some of this in action and really sure. let you yeah. be the brains of the operation and I'll just do the killing. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I like having a gunner on there. Yeah. Stand, but, all I gotta do is call him in. You know, my goal is just to have a good hunt with Mitch. You know, a lot for me in hunting is camaraderie and having a good time and all the things that go into hunting. It's not necessarily just calling in and killing a bunch of coyotes. You know, we can call in and one coyote or two coyotes and have a good time together. And the camaraderie in hunting, I think, is something that gets lost at times and the kill becomes more important, but not for me. It's something that I enjoy a lot and I'm definitely grateful for it. The first stand we got into was kind of in the middle of this valley. We were kind of pinned down there, but I just wanted to start with a little cottontail, baby cottontail. I didn't want to howl. And the reason I didn't want to howl is I didn't want to light everything up on my very first stand there without seeing everything and knowing how I can get around in better positions. Nothing came in, so we moved to a, another spot that Mitch had in mind. It's a beautiful area. There's a river that runs behind me and there is a uh, old river bed that runs in front of us. All right, Mitch, we got the wind coming right down the straw here through this field. I'm gonna sit on that short side with the AR. They're probably gonna come down, down out of there, right here on this corner. Or what I'm thinking, I'm gonna put the call down here. Those coyotes are gonna circle downwind, so you be ready down this field. Kill them right below that call. It was nice. I was watching him look around and pick stand locations. And so I was a student and he was the teacher. I started playing uh, coyote pair and I backed it up with a more mature howl on top of that to so sound like a small group of coyotes on the Mr. Mouthy and I was using a diaphragm, the top gun, just kind of sound like a little bit more mature coyote to kind of get a response and get more volume out there. And I spotted a coyote is what I thought about 100 yards right on the corner of this field. It's a bobcat. And here it was a beautiful bobcat. So we got an awesome show of this bobcat coming in. We couldn't harvest that cat because it wasn't in season, but this one really did something cool. He just sniffed it. He just sniffed the call. He sniffed. 
the call. He put his nose, I'm pretty sure he put his nose right on the call on the Banshee. That's why you use a Fox Pro right there, mister. I know you want to shoot a coyote, but when I can show you a bobcat, I'll try to do it. I, That's the best cool. I can. That That's was cool. awesome. Cool encounter, man. Well, we didn't get Mitch a kill that first night, but the bobcat encounter was definitely something he'll probably remember for a long time. 40 yards from us, not in season, so we didn't take a shot, but we sure had a good time watching him. It's early fall, the weather's unpredictable, and we're calling coyotes in South Dakota. So the next day, Mitch had to take some time away from us for a little while. My boss calls a meeting in Denver, and so I just made plans to check out for one day, uh, but then I was gonna be coming back. We went on to this ranch that he had put us on, and it wasn't a lot of cover there, so we were just doing the best we can. We had a some mist and cloud and rain kind of move in, but we were grinding through um, and we were just trying to learn this country and call it at the same time. That was a coyote right here on top of the hill, right here on top. As I'm looking at this coyote, here comes another one up to over the hill and she is just cussing. Right here, right here, right on the hill. She hears that pup distress, she thinks somebody's getting their butt kicked and she kind of was coming good, but got behind that hill and never popped back up. I don't know where she went. It stinks. It's been rough. It's been a tough morning, but at least I know what they're coming into now. Nothing's coming to distress, but right there towards the end of the stand, I hit yipping coyotes. And as soon as I hit that yipping coyotes, I wait till it's ready to almost done and I slam on the pup distress. When you hit that pup distress, it just sounds like one of them got into something or one of them's getting beat up. And that's exactly what it's probably the female came up over top of the hill and just didn't like that. We've got Mitch back with us now. As we're driving in, I'm thinking of what I would do. And mm -hmm. so far, like- You're par for the course? You're no, I'm like 0 for 10. <laughs> I'm like 0 for 10. <laughs> Mitch hooked back up with us and there was a little bit of funk in the air. It's been a bit of a grind. We just decided to turn it around and take it to him right there. I was pumped. I know what sequence I want to run. We just need to find some good country. We slid up this draw on this river bottom and got up over top of these hills. I turned around to Mitch and I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what we needed. We had the wind right, we had good country. We sat down, I started, opened up that stand with a coyote pair and a how, and immediately we had a response. Do you hear those in town over here? Yeah. I was feeling good because when they howl at me, I have a pretty good chance to call them in. Twelve o'clock low. See him. Oh yeah. I'm on him. Okay. Nice shot. Awesome. Nice shot, awesome. man. You finally, <laughs> finally killed a coyote with me. Awesome. It's been like five years in the making. Beautiful. Nicely done. Look at that fur on that thing. That's a pretty coyote. I'm a turkey fanatic too, like you. The turkey won't want to come to the high ground. So it's interesting to me that these guys have really no regard for that. I like even when I'm calling turkeys, I want to have the high ground, you yeah. know? So you have the elevation mainly for this reason. So you saw how well we could see right there. Yeah. If we'd have been 10 feet lower, we wouldn't have killed this coyote. Yeah. So get up high so you can see everything coming into you and you can get a shot at him. First kill of the trip and the fact that I actually made the shot uh, felt like a pretty big relief. The monkey was off our back and I sensed momentum building at that point. We just had a crew light up on the other side of that knob and that other drainage. I'm debating whether to move to them before we start calling. I think we gotta be a little aggressive. Let's make it happen. At that point, it was going to be our last stand of the day. Felt we had nothing to lose. I said, let's be aggressive and let's go get them. I felt pretty good that there was no other coyotes between us and them. So I, was, I felt pretty good that we could slide up there 
with the wind right and set down on that stand to get them to respond without spooking anything. I got a coyote way out there in that dirt patch out there. There's a second one coming behind it, walking to it. Let me get a pup to stress. Here he comes, you see him? Here he comes. He's coming. I don't know where he's going. Here he comes. He's coming hard too. I don't know where he's gonna pop up. A few minutes later, we actually see it up on the hillside across the canyon from us, and it didn't look like it was gonna come in. 288, just hold right the top of his back. I'll be honest, I didn't see it. Did I smoke him? Oh, dude! <laughs> Fur flying in the air. I just shot a coyote from 290 yards away across a canyon. You know, I got pretty jacked up on that kill because whenever I see a coyote come in and he hangs up, I want to make sure that coyote gets, gets killed, you know? And Mitch just crushes this guy. You know what? That's a hike I don't mind taking. Pretty coyote too, man. Yeah. Nice shot, Mitch. That Thank was you. a sweet shot. He's got confidence. We got the confidence rolling. We're ready to go do more stands. There she goes. She's a little smaller than the other one, but yeah. she's all right. Abner, 12, 12 o'clock low. See him. Oh, I'm on him. 288. It's early fall, we have Outdoor Channel's Mitch Petrie, and we're hunting coyotes in South Dakota. It's raining this morning, it got warmer, so it was cold yesterday, but it's starting to warm up. We've got an east wind. We've been here before, we got some good stands we're gonna hit. Mitch is running the bone crusher. He's been nicknamed the cleaner. He just comes in, cleans house. Nothing is safe. This stand here, we set it up right at daylight on Prairie Dog Town. We started calling. I'm gonna start out with Prairie Dog Distress, see what happens right here. Now, right here, here's Patrick. Patrick coming right in for the call. Right here, 15, 20 yards out. And as soon as I'm about ready to shoot this badger, Mitch said, there's a coyote out there, 300 yards. Let me get a little his cotton tail. Run it now. Yes. Shot. Nice shot. Stay glue. We we'll get another one here. Couldn't have been more than two or three minutes after that, we ended up having uh, another coyote come in from the right side. Here comes one right here, coming in hard right here. Got it, there's, there's a third coyote right out there. He's just looking, he's looking right at it. Get that pup distress quick. These coyotes are just coming single file. It's like we're sitting in a waterfowl blind where we're hunting ducks.
Nice shot, Mitch. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we just smoked a triple. So we spared the badger for three coyotes. <laughs> I think I would take those numbers any day. It's a triple. That's my first ever triple. That's awesome. First ever triple on a Shaboom. Done a double before. Get one out of here. Running these suppressors from suppressed armament, that is what saved us on that stand because it just, it just still, it's like stealth mode, you know? Right. The reason for this triple, I'm a firm believer, it was those new suppressors I was running from suppressed armament systems. It didn't scare off other coyotes in the area when we made a shot, so we had op more opportunities at multiples. You hear two things. You actually hear the action of the rifle cycle, and then you hear what we called the meat report, where which was the thud. Every time I took a shot and hit a coyote, I hit it, I knew I hit it hard from the report. The cleaner, Mitch Petrie, yeah. just doesn't let anything get away. Ain't nothing safe. <laughs> yeah. That's you, the kind of person. You call them in and I'll clean them up for you. You just keep <laughs> running the bone crusher and keep laying them out. South Dakota certainly offers a very large number of predators and, and in fact a lot of coyotes. My thought process is, let's get in here before the deer season kicks in. It's a high population, a lot of coyotes, younger pups out running around, learning how to feed and learning how to hunt. We should have good numbers of coyotes responding to the call. It's starting to get dark as clouds blocking the sun, and we had time for one more stand, but we had to hustle. and a coyote steps out at about 600 yards way over on the horizon on this other hill. Coyote right out there on the hill. Way out there on the horizon, that far hill. I'm gonna play Lil's Contail, see if I can get him to break loose off that hill. Well, anytime you have a coyote coming in like that, you just don't know where another coyote could be. He's coming down the hill. Right here, right here, right here. You want him? I got him. You want him? As soon as I get on it, it goes behind this one bush. Mitch has the angle on it. Where's he at? Oh! Nice shot. And smokes this kite on the run. An amazing shot. The second one never showed up and never gave us another look. But it was a great way to end a great day of coyote hunting. You're liking that bone crusher, aren't you? I have total confidence. You know, one thing Good. the suppressor does too is there's really no anxiety about, you know, you're, you're not anticipating, a, you know, this doesn't have any recoil right. and there's no report. So right. it's just smooth. It's almost like playing a video game. <laughs> it really is. What a great day, man. Nice job. Let's go take a look at it. Nice job, man. Male, huh? Big old male too. That's a pretty coyote. Well, I know that I had a blast out here in South Dakota. I'm sure we're going to do it again together. Uh, it's been the best coyote trip of my life. And uh, i tell you what, we had a great time just being in camp with good people, great opportunities almost on every stand we went to. We had fun and just Mitch, thanks so much for taking the time to come with us and share some stands with me and memories I won't forget, especially that bobcat sniffing the fox, bro.